do it it's time to do it what's up dudes johnny bean this is johnny bean exclusively van halen the van halen show on youtube on twitch on facebook if this is your first time here and you like van halen hey you found the right place so make sure to smash that subscribe button we're looking to get to 12k youtube subscribers and uh tonight you guys we're going to talk about uh women and children first it's the anniversary today so we're going to talk about the songs we're going to talk about uh trivia anything you guys want to chime in with uh in the chat go ahead and uh and let us know and i'm just i'm just letting some of our facebook friends in okay all right let's do this this is exclusively van halen for march 26 2024 right yeah all right here it is hey this is Michael Anthony right here, and you are watching exclusively Van Halen on the Johnny Bean TV. Keep it there. Woo! See ya! Ron Gunner, welcome. Man. Oh, we can't hear you though. Unmute your mic. Yo, what's up, dudes? Exclusively Van Halen. Ron, restart your computer again real quick. Ron's trying to get in here too, but he's having all sorts of technical issues. Hey, it's Tuesday. That's how it is. <laughs> right? <laughs> Can we hear you? Not for Mr. me. Mr. Mike, what's up, dude? Just hanging out on a Tuesday. Right. Just on, waiting man. around to talk about women and children first. Well, let's let's do it. Let's My do favorite that. album of the day yeah yeah well hey let's say hello to zim zim's guitar hey there he is hey guys how you doing great how are you man mike how are you good man good to see you yeah talking yeah. van halen yeah yeah today is the uh where, where is it it's the 44th anniversary of women and children first so we're going to talk about the album we're going to go song by song the whole the whole thing all of it all of it the whole thing the whole the whole record come on john Dang. give me a break is that cool <laughs> <laughs> you may have to take a break halfway through one break no just kidding okay but hey let's say hello to our top tier of uh channel members channel john, members johnny bean hey. youtube channel channel membership it's a great way to help support the channel and support these shows the top tier is the executive producers and they are currently sherman callahan cc nova nine michael smith music therapy laz uh r habs warlag fairfield guitar co majestic pb and j cat and janice lala the intern channel membership Woo -woo. yeah yeah it's a great way to help support the channel and support these shows and uh, if you'd like to help in other ways super chats is a way you can help support and the cool thing about that is they change the color of my lights so you see behind me you see what's called the guitar noir you got some prizes by the way we're giving one of those magazines away tonight where is it the brand new guitar world oh i haven't even right seen there. that yet class of 84 you can win this today um but what you got to do is hang out towards the end of the show and we do like a random number thing. It's pretty cool. So we'll be giving this away tonight. Really cool. Beautiful. Really cool uh, issue. But uh, real quickly, let's do a couple of, uh, couple other announcements here. We're live on Facebook. We got Facebook stars. We're also live in the exclusively Van Halen group, 63,000 members. EVH Gear Fans Live group, Johnny Bean TV group. We're live on Twitch. This is a podcast on Spotify. We're on X. 
We're basically everywhere there is, and if you want uh, some cool stuff, Sweetwater links down below and Amazon links down below as well. So, yeah. Sweetwater. Sweetwater. Yeah. Here's Ron. Ron, can we hear you? I am I am here now. Woo. We hear you. Yes. I don't know what it is on Tuesdays, but my God. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Hi, everybody. We used, Johnny, we, we used to call it Tech... Technical difficulty Tuesday. <laughs> That's what I'm going to call it from now on. Tech Tuesday. I think it would be easier to just name all the platforms you're not on, Johnny. We could move through this even quicker. I know. You're not on, you're not on MySpace, right? Well, maybe you are. I am on MySpace. <laughs> I still have like 30,000 friends over there. <laughs> and He's even on fans only, too. Uh-oh. Yeah. For only fans, whatever. <laughs> yep, I am. By the way, Van Halen t-shirt. You can get this. Links down below to Van Halen store. There you go. I like that one. Yeah. And jacket, Simple, too. but effective. Actually, Van Halen jacket. There is that go. in the Van Halen store, or is that something? I is. thought you put that together. No. It's very no. you. It's actually a women's <laughs> jacket. Well, thank you. Thank oh. you so much. It's actually a women's jacket. So I'll be wearing this on my OnlyFans. And only this. And li little else. Yeah. Can you get, can you get this shirt on the... Uh... Yeah, let's see. Man, oh, there you go. Oh, right on, man. You ever seen that shirt? No. Did you get Where that at, at the show we were at? Yeah. So did uh, Laz. He got the same one. Oh, I got cool. two shirts with that one. That's one of them. Cool. 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 All right. What we else? What's everybody and, uh, wearing? Yeah. Zims, what are you wearing? I don't know. Oh. Some... Some merch, yeah, some t shirt I got somewhere. Six star <laughs> muscle Pro, milk or something. nutrition. There Love you go, man. man. Let's yeah. see those muscles. <laughs> Which one? Okay. All right, Which one? all right, let's see your shirt. What are you wearing? Oh, I just got I just got the black one, but I have been reading this today. Tone oh, chaser. no way. Yeah, I have been reading this today, so right on, man cool cool man well hey let's say hello to some people in the chat here we got rock daddy is he hey, hiding rock out daddy. over there rock is he there zims yeah he's there no 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 he was he was in here yesterday though rock daddy we call him cool. rock or is it mr daddy cool we got kurt rocks we got gary holt JB? on facebook hey what's up man we got tony t from Toronto. Toronto. Tony, Tony T. T from Toronto. Let's see. I think the T is for Toronto. MPN <laughs> is here. Peggy is here. By the way, Peggy, I, I mailed out your your prize uh, today. Peggy had won uh, the other day on one of the one of the previous shows. Dan Gorman is here. Daniel. Uh, let's see. We got Facebook user. Welcome. We got B nine. Nettie and let's see yeah Did we have a net appearance yet was he curled Everybody. up on the uh he was he was, he was right a... there i don't yeah did you see him walk by he, he... i didn't see him. maybe somebody did yeah he, he he uh he's somewhere else now but we'll see him we got philip love it 51 50 time dude it's always 51 50 time around here man right right michael million yeah. year albums <laughs> <in our> streets <laughs> uh, oh i know i know this is like the third van halen album anniversary this week week well we did we fourth did. last week we did van halen three mm -hmm. saturday i did 50. i did uh go. was that saturday or friday one of them was van halen two. Oh right 5150 was another one 51, and, then, and then now this one. See, Bozo's now, got no hair on top. Now this one. Yeah, no Bozo's. Oh, cool, man. Cool. No Bozo's. Yeah. Who are those handsome gents? Oh. So Women and Children first came out uh, today. How many years ago? 44. 44 years ago. Wow. That was the first. And so that was the 1980 invasion tour. That's the first show I ever saw from them. 
So they already had two albums out before I got to see them. You know what? You know what I was doing that year? Getting ready to enter this world and be born. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I had on my plate that year. I went this... down to the Coliseum in Phoenix, Arizona, and I saw them play. It was the 1980 nice. invasion. I guess I was like a senior in high school. And um, I remember everybody wants some. I don't recall what the very first song that they played was. But I, I do remember. Uh, oh, man. I remember a, a lot about it. I do remember everybody wants some, though. If I if I really think about it, I can tell you the song they opened up with on that tour. But let's yeah. ask the chat. The chat always yeah, who remembers. So what was the first track, right? Or the first song that Van Halen opened the uh, the eighty tour with? So wait, so Zim, so you were in Phoenix in eighty? Yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, I I was there too, but I wasn't a fan yet, so I wasn't at the show. Right, but I, but I was there. Yeah, and I remember nineteen eighty one. They opened with. Um, uh, that get 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 out and push center the swing. Old, oh, center swing, right? Center swing was nineteen eight was what they opened up for it in eighty one. But I don't rem recall nineteen eighty. First time seeing them. Oh man! And I was way only had the three, blades, right? Yeah, they only had the three records to pull from. Yeah. But all killer, no filler. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Yeah. Actually, let let's go ahead and talk about this really quickly. You're talking about the albums. Van Halen store has Ooh. available the collection 78 to 84 <clears throat> six LP box set. And this is the, the limited edition exclusive with backstage passes. That's cheaper than I thought it was going to be actually. When you first said that it's an ex uh, limited edition exclusive with backstage passes, I thought, Oh, they're going to jack up the price. Uh, maybe. 10 bucks or something. It doesn't seem all that much compared to the, the yeah. Sammy one that came out last year. Let's see. Can we click on this stuff? And yeah. It's more so albums. There you go. That's the front. That's the back. You get, you get the, the albums in there. And then as far as the exclusive, you get some, uh, I guess the reprints, reprints of, of passes. So that, that's some cool stuff, huh? That's very cool. Yeah. And so a booklet. Go. Oh, that's that poster. Oh, no, that's, that's the, the, yeah. That's the poster I was telling you about. I have 20 of those, and I was going to try to find one to show off today, but I... I uh, and that was from this are. album, right? That came with the Women and Children first album, yes. but we haven't really shown anyone what it is yet. Yeah. Yep. That's true. But, uh, yeah, so you guys, head on over to Van Halen's store and and uh pick up uh, the collection 78 to 84 and limited uh, supply yeah it does say out of production yeah i mean i i guess it it came out like a year ago maybe longer oh, i think it came out a while before that a few while years back ago. a while back yeah. okay yeah well and it'll you. go beautifully right next to this other one <laughs> if you have that one yeah it will. Look at that, that man. Yeah. After is that show. from your show? Is that no. 80? That's 84, this, right? This is 84. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Not a reprint. It's original. No. A print print. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Zim's got Zim got bored. He's just wandering around. <laughs> yeah. I think that's his son. Actually. <laughs> I don't think that's oh, Zim. There he is. <laughs> right. That's another Zim's. Right? Yeah, that's the, that's the other Zim. one. Hey, man. All right, that's another Zim. There's son several. Of Zim. <laughs> the son of Zim. Hey, there he is. Kurt Rocks gave the poster away. Oh, man. Hope you got well, something good for it. I've got several of them here, and if I can find them, we'll be we'll be giving those away. But, but again, tonight, we'll be giving away the brand new Guitar World, Class of 84, so yeah, because this that was 40 years ago this year. You guys want to win this. Yeah. So uh yeah, let's let's do it. Let's let's get to the uh let's get to the the album. Uh let's see. I got one of these the other day. Oh cool. Just setting in my guitar shop. It came in a uh 
I don't know. I bought a guitar or something. It was in a gig bag or something. I'm like, oh, score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, so, man. There's that. Oh, yeah. oh. It's fun when you get one of those. Twinsies. Oh, yeah, I got man. a bunch of those at Guitar Center. They're, they make me play a little better. Oh, look at that one's even cooler. This one actually belongs to somebody. Is this yours? I gave this away the other day and I forgot. You haven't sent it yet. <laughs> Did you win it? Who me? No. Yeah. Who? Somebody won it, and I didn't send it. I sent a bunch of the other stuff. You should write these down, Johnny. I do. I, I, <laughs> okay. I, good. <laughs> I have a feeling. I, I have a. I have a feeling like you Hold won on. it and you forgot, or or he won it. Yeah, somebody. One. one of you guys won it. I haven't won any since you started doing the numbers. I ain't won nothing. Mm -hmm. I won I some picks one. a long time ago. I think you have a Cabo Wabo one coming my way yeah that one. Oh man you got the collection uh, oh he's got the varenture vintage let me show the guys what you're buying <laughs> okay i got a customer he's buying a pedal there you Come go on, guys who's had one of these things oh behringer vintage wow. tube overdrive yeah look at that thing right don't got Did a you tube now it? you do no but i mean okay well if it doesn't work you can bring it back no yeah, that harmony. Dane, look at this. Oh, good. <laughs> a Van, Van Halen after show. 84. Wow. With the little yeah. the little private investigator guy. Does he have yep. a character name or something? Dave Incognito. We've got the Bozo. We've got the what's the little guy with the hammer? Um, that would be the term the termite company guy. Right. What's we got to give all these guys their own little pet is names. It little though. man? I don't know. But all these characters deserve pet names from the fandom, I think. We got to work. It's it's far past the time we should be working on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Suggestions in chat. <laughs> 52. So what do we think about this record, boys? You like yeah. it? Okay, well, um I'm thinking that because of the all the success from the first out al first two albums, I'm kind of thinking that they were at a point now in their career where they could experiment a little bit, and so that's why they came up with um, some of the tunes that are on there was just them having fun, them doing a lot of experimenting, and even still eddie still experimenting with different noises have different sounds like the electric piano through a right Marshall, start yeah. things like that so they An were Wurlitzer piano yeah so they were pop very popular at this time and they were having fun in the studio and experimenting with different things and so is this the first sort of that piano we hear from eddie on record I think it is. I don't is. think anything on one or two. Well, when I saw him live, it was Michael Anthony that was pounding on that thing. Oh, really? Okay. Mm -hmm. He was doing the John Paul Jones thing, playing bass and playing keys. Right. That's yeah. cool that you saw that, man. <clears throat> you saw that tour. I did. Yeah. Man, that's that's great. And they started yeah. doing more acoustic stuff. There's some. There's some instrumentals on this one sort of right yeah um <clears throat> mm -hmm. and and there's some instrumentals that that aren't on it still at sunset that studios right no 5150 yet take your whiskey home i mean was that was that a song that they've had for a long time and possibly could have been on van halen too even maybe van halen it feels one. like it yeah it does huh it fits somewhere in between Ice Cream Man and uh, Spanish Fly or something with the acoustic plucking kind of thing going on. Right. Actually, they, it's they, not really finger plucking, but yeah, it's. They did a demo slacking. for that song way back. So there is, you can hear a demo of, of uh, what was it? Take Your Whiskey Home? Yeah. You can hear an earlier version. Well, my baby, she don't yeah. want me around. 
<laughs> it feels like a timeless song too. It feels a lot older than Van Halen. It feels like and an then, old blues song. And then could this be magic? Again, another song where they're just growing as a band and they feel like at this point, man, we can do whatever we want to do. So could this be magic? Um, who, who is the girl that sang on that? Um, Nicolette. Nicolette um, Larson. Larson. That's right. So mm -hmm. yeah, they're just having and the, fun doing some studio stuff. I mean, is that the, also I was thinking about this today. Is that the only non band member to sing on a Van Halen track? Mm -mm. No. Some that no. I know about that. Well, some uh, of the Hagar stuff had, um, like a producer wait, or something. Wait a minute. Well, I mean, Don Landy was the one that said, come on, Dave, give me a break. Right. Or was that Ted? I don't know if I count that That's as singing, not singing. That's not singing. Yeah. <laughs> that was... He made a cameo, though. And my, like we said on the Van Halen 3 one that we were talking about, Mike Post plays an instrument on it. He plays a piano. <clears throat> yeah. So there's that. But I, I, as far as singing, I, who else would we hear as far that's as, outside the band? As far as singing, uh, Steve Lukather did some background oh, really? vocals on top of the world. No kidding. I did not know, I did that. Not know that. I come here to learn. But at this yeah. point in their career, 1980, <laughs> Nicolette Larson was the first additional singer that we heard. Where would we know her from? Was she a rising star? Just a friend of the family? With, There's going to take a lot of love. Right. Okay. The blah, blah, blah. Um, which I, was a cover written by, um, I don't know. Somebody wrote it. She did in a lot the of who, she who, made who, who wrote that? Janice, who wrote that song? Uh, Dakota's telling us that this is the album that made Valerie fall in love with Eddie. I think it worked for all of us. At mm -hmm. one album or another. Mm -hmm. But as far as Nicolette Larson... Well, let's 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 go let's go track by yeah, track. track. Let's 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 go back in the cradle will rock. Okay. Now that song, yes, that's the first time we heard uh, piano, piano or keyboards or technically. But you wouldn't know it. Electric to listen piano. Listen to it. Electric piano. Yeah, because I think um, I think uh, the first Van Halen album, most of that stuff was already like written and done by the time they recorded it. Second album, a lot of that stuff, uh, same. I think by the time they got to this record, I think Edward had started writing some new things and he was experimenting mo more. And that's where we get stuff like in the Cradle Will Rock with the, with the electric uh, piano mm. as a, a guitar, you know. Through, through the, through Almost the, the main instrument. Oh, and Ted. Yeah. Yeah was upset about that song the middle part of the song where it's doon, 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 doo, doo, oh, on the piano that. ted's like no nah, nah, come on get that what do you <laughs> but does he <laughs> does eddie does there. eddie play that and eddie plays eddie guitar like, no, over that right got to stay and yeah. then ted left after the day and they put it back in there and that was the first time well i don't know this for sure but that was the first time that <laughs> Eddie and and Ted sort of bashed heads a little bit on on, on that song and 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 having the piano in there and and Ted just thought mm. it was just kind of goofing off sounding a little bit and he wasn't all into it. Yeah, mm. a but flange yeah. Wurlitzer Eddie piano like, no, plugged no, into a Marshall, then run through an uh, MX. What was it? Flan yeah. another flanger a phaser mx yeah. mxr or phaser flanger. The f yeah. yeah and you're just yeah. pounding on a bunch of notes at the same time you're not actually playing chords in the intro part of it right mm -hmm. you're just pounding on it mm -hmm. the flanger yeah um and i think edward wrote that like in the back of the bus on the previous tour he was messing around on a little keyboard just the main riff or wrote the main riff and then, because see, by this time, he was writing a lot of stuff on the keyboards. Yeah. And with the next record, Fair Warning, most of that stuff ended up being keyboard stuff that he applied to the guitar later. Transcribed it over one way or the other. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, but uh, yeah, with, with, uh, in the Cradle Will Rock, that was a song where, where he played the piano 
And everybody was fine with it because it didn't sound like a piano. It sounded like a guitar. So can I tell a quick story about what that song makes me think of? Yes. Um, Actually, we got three hours, so make it make it short. (laughs) uh, Uh, Who are you? It'll be short. But (laughs) you know, like I got I got into this band way late, right? Like Balance is when I finally went. Oh, I think I like this band. I think I should check them out. And uh, well, that was still thirty years ago. So (laughs) yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's it's late for the Van Halen era, still early in my life. Um, but I was trying to collect each of the albums on CDs. Kids, look it up. It's in the it's in the history books somewhere. And um, I was trying to get my hands on this one record I didn't have from the Dave era. I think I had Van Halen one. I definitely had 1984 and all that stuff. But I was like, which one do I want to get next? And I remember. Do you, do you guys remember that? You probably don't even remember. But I didn't have a car, so I couldn't go down to the record store anytime I wanted. There was some company that let you dial on the phone, type on the keypad what band or artist you were looking for, and then browse their album catalog and listen to clips on the phone. And I must have listened to, because I was like, I can't wait to go get this record in 1995 or six. And the Quake Cradle of Rock. That was like the only one I, I had heard on the radio from this album at that so time. So you heard and that through a phone it. speaker? <laughs> like, and in my brain, my imagination, it, it should so sound So it did terrible. sound like a guitar to you. Yeah, except I didn't know what it was. So, <laughs> but what was so cool was like, whoa, my imagination filled in the rest because I'd heard it in better quality on the radio. And I was like, yeah, that song, that song, I really like that one. I got to go get this CD. Back then, if you liked a song, you had to buy all 12 songs on the same album. Um, so anyway, that was a fun thing. I forget which, which service it was, but it was like, imagine, you know how you go into iTunes or Amazon music now and you listen to a 10 second, 30 second yeah. clip of a song, yeah. or now you just subscribe to a service and you get the whole thing. But yeah, that was me listening to the first 10 to 20 seconds of, and the cradle will rock over and over again, play it again, play it again. <laughs> and see, I'm, I'm old enough to remember to go into a few record stores. Yeah, and you could go into a booth with headphones, sample it. Yeah. yeah, I did a little bit of that at Tower Records with CDs. Yeah, and there's another the unique thing about 1980. 1980 was the last year you could get anything on an oh. eight track. Okay, cassettes were taking over, but 1980 was the last year you could actually get this album on an eight track. For there all the is. old guys out there that remember that. I had the first album on eight track, then cassette. Yeah. And then eventually, with the album, and then eventually I ended up getting a CD of it. Yeah, that was my yeah. first was a CD. I started collecting CDs before anything. I think it'd be really good. This is a different topic, but I think it'd be really good for the music market to come up with a new format where we could actually buy a thing. A, a, a thing that is a way that you listen to your favorite music or your favorite albums. We're but it wouldn't be an album. Around. You need a new format that you can just somehow plug Manipulate, in your phone hold or, it in your hand. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. That's why I got then into you, vinyl you feel again. Like you own I can it. touch it. Yeah. I know. You feel like you own it. You can mm-hmm. inventory yeah, it's them. A, you can collect them. Well, like you what know? Mike was saying, vinyl is coming back. I mean, it look is. what we just showed For you. Van Halen store. Is, yeah. Th- they're selling it's records. On again. vinyl. Yeah. You know? It's more yeah. fun. I get it's more tangible. Hey, when the album's halfway over, I gotta get my ass up, walk across the room, open a thing, <laughs> turn a thing over, hit some buttons. If I want to hear any more music, you're involved, man. It's maybe not convenient, but it is really no, but you're, freaking awesome you're to have them. Yeah. Romeo Delight's demo, Get This Show on the Road, is one of my favorites, says Green Beans. Yeah, that's oh, We'll get to no that way. song in a minute. No way. Yeah. Look at so that. You guys remember these? Thing. I do. So I guess yeah, I was wrong about too. Nicolette Larson. I guess she did write that song. Oh, did, did maybe someone else covered it later. Maybe. I don't know. I wonder if that was um, a studio thing. Yeah. Well, the, the way band. she got involved with Van Halen was, I believe she was dating Ted Templeman. That's what I was going to say. It was and like a producer thing. Yeah. Edward And he had brought Edward in to play a solo on one of her songs. So you can buy one of her albums and Eddie is on it, but oh, it doesn't, right. his name isn't listed on there. Yeah, he loved doing that. He, 
did it for some yeah. kid from the that band, the Jackson Five, too. He did it for some guy in that band hmm. on some album in 1982. Michael, yeah, some guy. Oh, was that. that his name, Michael? Yeah, I forgot. I think that might be the dude's name. Pedo. <laughs> Never Tito's heard of him Tito. though. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So what is got three of what them. is the song list on on the back of your record say there, Johnny? Because mine's a little funky compared to what you just had up on the screen earlier. Yeah, it's probably the same. Yep. What's it doing starting with Tora Tora? Is that it doesn't even start that way on my record. No. No, I mean and everybody wants them as the last track, but that's not how it goes on the record. They just mixed them it's, up. It's mixed up. Yeah. It probably just flows better, or you know, it, it just sits the way the good the I shape guess. of the titles. I yeah, guess I don't know. <laughs> Johnny's probably got the, the, the only one plan. album, the album cover that, that's messed up like that. Nope. That might no, be the one here. They, no, they all oh. are. Oh, okay. They're all like that. That's, that's what he's same. saying. That's what he's saying. I was saying, I was saying maybe mine was messed up, but Johnny's <laughs> is the same. Dude, look at this, man. Anytime, see, anytime anybody asks me, hey, Johnny, what's your, if you could only pick one Van Halen album, what would you take, right? And I, I, always, I always go back to this. The because double got, album. <laughs> two on one. Right. Yeah, those tapes could play extra long if you recorded them right. So look at that. So you got Women, Children First all on one side. That's all the so You got all the songs. Well, the greatest hits package that had all the Sammy Hagar and all the Roth stuff on there, plus Me Wise Magic. Best of both worlds, yeah. That's a good well, one. Well, yeah. Well, the greatest hit. was Me Wise Magic on the on the Best of Both Worlds? I, don't, I didn't recall no. what it was. Maybe it is. And Fools isn't on there. And, no. Yeah, oh, I don't think Alive, so, yeah. There's a ton of stuff that's not on it. That it's was all the based on the radio, radio play. Yeah. yeah. Kids today there's fan favorites no and then there's, yeah. Kids they have no idea about how a pencil eraser and a cassette kind of work together. <laughs> what do they have to do with each other? <laughs> and, yeah. you know, there's another unique thing. And, and I've talked about this before on the channel about songs that fade out. And Van Halen would, a lot of times they would live, you know, you have to come. And they were a live you band. Bring it to an end. Yeah. And they would try to bring their live songs into the studio and just do them live. But this is a fade out song. So it's kind of weird. Which one? Didn't, uh, and the cradle will rock. Oh, that one does fade out. Yeah. And so, so does uh, um, fools. Yeah. And some people might call the song rock on because at the very end of the song, he's just like rock on. Rock and it fades on. out saying that. So. I have all the guitar hero tracks. And so I do have From a version of it where, where it doesn't fade out. Right. The song actually doesn't stop. It it just comes to like a like a like Duh. it just kind of like they just end. Yeah. It actually they all kind of end separately. They're actually oh, there weird. is no hard ending to the song. Right. The last thing you hear is like is like the drum stop. Keyboard kind of keeps going. Yeah. Somebody you know. in the studio is going. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> Ted's we're done. like we're done. enough enough piano on this song. I'm running out of tape. <laughs> but now are we ready to move on to the second song here? Yeah. Oh. What's our second song? Is that the right song on the second? Everybody wants some. For me, it's saying Cradle of Rock. What? No, that's yeah, that's, that. that's some fake news right there. <laughs> okay, so first impressions of yes, Everybody we're talking Wants 1980, Some for right me now. is this is a great song to really listen to the drums. Because yeah, the song Alex starts is... with that drum thing, and mm -hmm. and uh, and and you know, Dave's Van doing Halen like a jungle, like a the drums, and this one really you could really hear his drum tones. It and, started and I feel with like a good jungle beat, all drums. That's yeah. what I was gonna say. It, it yeah. Dave is evoking a Tarzan scene while the drums are going, right? And he's off in the distance. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you hear little monkeys. Hoo, 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 hoo. Yeah, yeah, you hear yeah, little yeah. monkeys yeah. in there and stuff. So he's got kind of a jungle rhythm going. Right. Yeah, and it slowly creeps in with the the guitar stuff. And I think it was a song that in and I'm just guessing here, but I think it was probably written in the recording studio or very a couple of maybe a month before they went into the studio because some of the lyric content wasn't completely hashed out yet. 
And Dave kind of mumbles a line or two in That's this right. one. It's That's later right. written out in liner notes or something, but it's like, is that really what he was saying? I don't know. Uh, you know, I... I've seen a lot of people looking for a moonbeam is what it says yeah. in the liner notes. And I'm like, yeah. And that, that was a, a mistake that they listen back to it. And they're like, ah, is it, that's kind of what it sounds it. like. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm thinking this was a song that they, they actually were working up on the previous tour because yeah, I have like, you guys know, I, I've got a huge collection of Van Halen bootlegs. Yeah. And I I think I remember hearing them play this live in '79. Okay. Oh wow. But it's but it's not like it's the not way it is together yet. on the record. Um, it's just like a jam. Yeah, we got yeah, Janice. Send me a, send me a tweet at Johnny Bean. And they reminded were, me to find and that. This was a song where it became a radio hit song, but I don't think they had the intention of making this a top forty radio hit song because they the stretched it all it out. Way. It's long, stretched out, long intro, long guitar solos. This wasn't a dance the night away style of song. They mm -hmm. they had no. It wasn't fear built of, for radio. It wasn't. Yeah. It still got on radio because it's a little more wild. It's kicked ass. Yeah. No, it was not built for radio. It shows a lot of the band's character in it too. I thought of of the the backyard party band and like you can oh, just yeah. feel like this is a bunch of drunk frat kids going yeah nuts in LA. And everybody wants to get laid is what the <laughs> song's about well what movie is the uh, song featured in does anyone remember well a couple actually but the oldest one from the 80s there it is there we Sligari go Ligari got it yo that's what i was yeah. thinking of a little animated hamburger playing eddie's guitar you guys remember that that's the only part i've seen from that movie i've never seen the rest the of movie's it. hilarious it's very 80s but it's very weird and funny it's and what's his name uh, is there more food playing instruments in that, in that <laughs> no that's in the that only movie? dream sequence that i recall <laughs> there is some food that gets up and crawls away off of a plate uh-huh not to give anything away but always <laughs> always worth watching it if you haven't seen better off dead check it out <laughs> and then it was later used in no it was the title of wasn't it um uh, a movie about uh, kids in the '80s playing on a baseball team together. It was uh, that came out of I don't know within the last five years. Um, Richard Linklater, who did Dazed and Confused, this he said was the oh, uh, right. He said he made a movie called Everybody Wants Some, and it was kind of a spiritual follow up to Dazed and Confused. Eh, hmm. It didn't hit quite right for me, but it was cool that he named the song named the movie after the song. Yes, they will make a movie on Van Halen someday. I'm, I think it's got to be in the works. I've heard of. It I don't is. Know if Johnny's heard of that. It's possibly in the works. There's a possible uh, movie. There's an option, I guess, to, to do a movie, a, yeah. a, a, a screenplay of Greg Renoff's book. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's that's what it is. Van Halen Rising. Yeah. So there is a possible movie. Yeah, there's the book right there. There's a possible movie on that. Maybe they didn't really, they didn't say yes or no, because you never know. Yeah. But anything can, it can be canceled maybe. after it starts shooting. So you never know. Yeah. Yeah. And then also with, with uh, Eddie's tone, as far as his guitar playing, if you were a fan of like eruption and stuff like this, and then this album finally came out, well, they came out one right after another. But when this I album mean, came out, it definitely did not yeah. disappoint the guys that wanted to hear him play guitar. Because the cradle will rock kind of through you with the keyboard part. And then there's a lot of single note in the cradle will rock. But then everybody wants some. Um, it's full on party jam, ripping the guitar. Dive bombs. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, definitely did not disappoint. Well, any of that's ki that's kind band. of what what Tora Tora was, as far as yeah. like the the instrumental, you know. But um, let's see, where were we? So everybody wants some. Yeah, great song. That I mean, that has to be. If we were to do a uh, 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 a poll, I think a you lot could. of people, a lot of people. Yeah, well, how many options do we get though? On I don't Twitch, think we get, I don't think we get that many on YouTube. Can you do them on YouTube? Cool. Oh yeah, or we can yeah. just do a poll right here in the chat with the people that are watching. Yeah, 
Yeah, see, I don't know. Yeah, we can do a cup. Yeah, it's not even worth it. We can't do that many. Let's see. Uh, but Ooh. fools. Is this fools. like about D Dave's roommates? I don't know. What is what is this song about? I live with fools. Is it his family? Is it his roommates? What's this about? I've never fully understood the the uh, inspiration <laughs> behind this song. Maybe we should scroll up. It probably says actually. One thing that I think cool. I don't know if you guys had heard anything about it. One thing that I especially like about this song, Fools, mm -hmm. is in the intro. It starts with Ed Eddie playing guitar. And he does little, and they have that little back and forth uh, between him and Dave. And Dave, where he yeah. he plays a little, ah, 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 yeah, and then Dave will yeah. sing an, ah, and then, wow, wow, and they go back and forth, like like Led Zeppelin <laughs> used to do that kind of stuff. Right. And Eddie so would follow whatever Dave did vocally. Got inspired by Led Zeppelin and the different bands that were doing the bat. The call and response is what they right. call it. You come up with a little riff. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page did it really, really good. The call and response. And that's what these two guys were doing right there. Did and they do that a lot live that. with Dave? Mm -hmm. They would do it live like that. Yeah. But yeah, you I mean, know they did it with Sammy a lot. If you're in the, if you're in the studio and you got a click track going and you, everything's on a grid and everything's got to be perfect. You're not doing call and response like that. You're not. These guys are problem. in the studio. They all got headphones on. Okay. This song's called Fools. Roll it. They hit the record button. It starts turning and they just go for it. And th that's how it ends. This out. is another song they had back in the day. So you can hear a demo of this from like 76. Wow. Same deal. On the uh, Gene Simmons Looney Tunes, maybe the Gene like Simmons, that. or maybe before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Let's again, see. Kiss Halen uh, the demo. More great uh, Kiss Halen, yeah. Great songwriting. Another song that wasn't Simmons. cut out to be a freaking hit song. It was cut out to just be a good long album rock song yeah. yeah it's almost six, six minutes, minutes long so yeah six minutes long these are all these are all really mostly album rock songs they I are mean, yeah there's no I mean, trimming the fat on anything except sometimes i would be a little disappointed when um van halen would fade the song out too soon i'm like no 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 keep going keep going and then they, you hear it fading out i'm like damn but this was uh <laughs> Was this a song that faded out in the end, or or did? Yeah, I think it did. Dun 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 dun. Another fade out. Yeah. So they could have stretched it. They could have stretched it, right? And they probably did live. I'm sure. Oh yeah. Another couple minutes on there. Raymond says he saw was there. Dane would have seen it. And so was Raymond. He said saw Van Halen April 26, 27 of 1980. Third and what did he say? Third and sixth row each of those nights. Oh no way, Uncle Raymond! That's amazing. Ask Raymond what they what they opened the show with. What song? Yeah, Raymond, do you opening? remember the set? Because I was at the I was at one night in 1980. I don't know what the dates were. It was here in Phoenix, but that was the first time seeing them. And but I can't remember the uh, <clears throat> what their opening song was. But I do remember everybody wants some because it had been it on the radio. Yeah, maybe it's <laughs> and you were hearing it on the radio, and then you go see them. Romeo Delight. There. Oh, they opened the show coming with Romeo up to you Delight. Next year. What was it? Romeo, Romeo Delight, Delight is what they opened oh, with. Oh wow! Right. Speaking of Romeo Delight, there it is. There yep. we go. Uh, How do you do that? How is that? I mean, play? I'm not. I'm doing it with a pick, but Eddie does it with uh, harmonic. So, and then uh, I'm not able to do it with this crummy guitar and crummy amplifier. But uh, thank you, thank you, you should, thank you. You should get a new guitar. I should. I need one. Try it one you more know anybody time. who knows any guitars real well? I don't know. Mike, well, try, it one, try it one more time, Mike. You can get it. You can get it. Let's get it. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> You know, a little bit of there harmonics in there. There uh, you go. It's a great riff. It's great. Just, well, hey, uh, great you riff. might be able to win a guitar here, actually, coming up. Yeah. yeah. So, 
subscribe to the channel. Give me that Kramer Beretta. Yeah. Kramer Beretta. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, and so, so when that guitar riff starts this song, you you know that something good is about to happen in oh, this yeah. song. When it starts up with a riff like that, this I will just say is sick right out of the gate. As I got to know all of Van Halen's catalog, I think I settled on that one song being my favorite Van Halen, like, ever. I think it's my favorite Van Halen Whoa. song ever. Great ever. lyric content, you know, that yep. I never had no special reason, all that stuff. Yeah. Great yeah. lyric. And then the Feel My Heartbeat, they had to bring it down. Van Halen had, uh, what do you call it when you turn it down? They had dynamics. Yeah. And this was a great, great song where they bring it down. And you hear that bass guitar going. You know what it seems like? He's using they had, or, they had already done two tours by that point. So by the time this album came around, I think a lot of these were written in the style the of, or, or like written for live. For yeah, so they could play it in the show, yeah, the, or play it in the studio the way they'd already played it live. That's why there's a lot of parts. Live. There's a lot of dynamics. They bring it down. Yeah, they're doing little things here and there. Yeah, that's my favorite part of that song is the breakdown. I know. Let it break thing. down. Let Dave get all showy and and yep. you know walk around and feel my heartbeat. And talking to the, the girls. Movie. He's always talking to the girls. Make it yeah. dramatic. He's down at the front of the stage. You know, feel my heartbeat. These girls yeah. are going crazy. Waiting and in the 2012 heavy. tour, yeah. was that the one where he was doing everything's getting slow? And he does some like. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I can't remember if it's that song. Me, Tokyo Dome. What was in that drink you guys gave me? I, I never heard that in song. Tokyo Dome. So <laughs> That's, well, I but I that was in 80. <laughs> Uh, no, maybe not. But yeah, I think in 2012, when they brought this song back for the the tour, I think Dave was doing that kind of stuff in the middle of that breakdown. That sounds yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yeah. You guys got it. What does he say? You got to try these drinks or something. <laughs> I forget what he said, but I think it was during that breakdown when things are getting very <laughs> weird. Dave was a great <laughs> storyteller and they they would give him time in between songs. They'd go backstage and sip a cup or whatever and and <laughs> let dave talk to the audience for a little while yeah which to me seems weird because I, I always see eddie in my mind shaking his head going oh god this guy you know here he goes again but when you see him on stage they're letting him lead the show like letting him do it and it it looks like they're all having a good time when he does it but yeah but that's what dave excelled at was yeah being the front showman Dave, yeah. uh, Dave told a story one time, and I'll paraphrase, but he was like, man, I was peeking in the back window, watching the band play, right? And dreaming to myself, one day, man, one day. And I see the lead singer in there, and he had a big joint. And, and, I, knew to, and I knew, man, deep in my heart, and blah, 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 blah. Someday I know I'm going to be in a band. Someday I know, you know, all my dreams are going to come true. And someday I'll have a big joint, just as big as that one. <laughs> that was the main goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he'd make it this big, long story like you thought he was talking about his career and everything. Right. And it's about it getting up, his hands on that and, joint. <laughs> yeah. It ends up just being mm. something about partying. Yeah. And you know, he told those same stories every night. Over and over. <laughs> so the band knew exactly what he was doing because they, they rehearsed those shows. Yeah, but I think every once in a while, because you, you can't you can't predict what's going to happen live. So every once in a while, something weird would happen. But uh, but hey, Raymond, hey, if you've got some photos, uh, message message them to me, and I'll I'll definitely show them. Oh, he needs a comment in there. I thought he was saying you could show us some pictures from the show. Johnny Bean could show you some pictures from the show. I can, but I think they're pictures that Raymond took. Oh, I think I, I, gotcha. I think that's that's what he's saying. So Raymond, oh, send, me a, send me a message on right, or like an email, Facebook, whatever. Lock me in here. Yeah. Zim's getting locked in. No, it's fine. Is it closing time? It is closing time, but I'll hang for a little while. Right on. 
Yeah, Whatever I'd tell you what have. the song is, but I guess it's Tora Tora. That's the first track on my record, apparently, but it's really not. Yeah. Well, so, okay, so Fools. We got Fools. Uh, Romeo Delight. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Oh, that's what we were talking about. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're on I blacked out for five minutes. I... Janice, can you please send Johnny a tweet that we've already talked about? Yeah. <laughs> can you remind me that? Okay. Okay, so Tora Tora, the next one. And not again, quite a that, song. That's the first one on my... No. Yeah, I, I would, except I would, it's not if you play it, right? No, I would call that like a little intro kind yeah. of a thing. I wouldn't even give that a title in my... Yeah, on, on the record, it's the first song on side two. Yeah. But on... Yeah. Sleeve, that's what i'm saying tora it's, tora it's the first song on the album was the on next there was there was eruption there was spanish fly tora tora was the next version of that right and if you listen to that like what mr mike how can you explain tora tora um it is is am I, i'm kind of mixing it up with growth is it the backwards record yeah. playing thing it is the tape it's, is playing backwards then a couple notes yeah. yeah the tape's playing backwards and and then it all of a sudden comes to a whoosh but it probably started out with a of a cymbals and drums or something um before it goes straight into the next song so it's you know you're saying it's kind of similar to like the it's the it's the successor to eruption in spanish fly i think it's more of just uh here let's put some crazy stuff that i recorded at yeah the beginning of let's song. come it's up not, with an intro it's not a an intricate solo it's just some weird effects of eddie noodling and alex i think smashing the the right. cymbals actually it's just guitar i i did a Is lesson it? on how to, i did a lesson on how to play it years ago yeah here in okay the and, and, so when it, it comes to the end is it just is it just him hitting it hard and it in reverse it just plays all it is, man. Where's my guitar? I'll play. Where's it. your guitar? I can play it for you. Here's that one. <laughs> play it for you. Okay, if you guys There's can hear me, guitar. If you could, can you can you hear this? Yeah. This is tor oh. There's no bar on here. Dang it. Oh, he's <laughs> whammying down. I need the whammy. I know a guy that's got a bunch of bars extra. <laughs> so I, in my opinion, I always thought Tor Toro was just. You know, Ed in the studio, and it's curious and his curiosity. I want to listen to the tape played backwards. Yeah. Okay. Here's how you play it. By the way, in the chat is my lesson from like 15 years ago or something. But Tora Tora is basically just this. Yeah. So he just pushes it all the way down. And then when you play that in reverse, yeah. yeah and then yeah. the very end is this. Guitar player it. 98, that's we it. have no uh, way of knowing when ads come up and autoplay ads and all that kind of stuff. We have no control over what any of that ad revenue stuff does. Gee, Johnny, is there a way he so could we somehow made not point see seven ads? Cents, uh, we had nothing to do with any of that. There's no How way many ads ever. are playing? <laughs> yeah, he says that he's had three, three ads, ads in play. 30 yep. minutes, but, but we have no uh, control listen. over that. I'm Johnny's best friend in the whole wide world. I still have the ads. It's sorry, it happens. Yeah, it just yeah. It, gets us it tells me if you guys want, I can tell you guys when the ads pop up free. because We're it tells me free. in the bottom of the screen. I get a countdown. Okay, yeah, he's he's a little mad, but so <laughs> no law says you got to stay here, buddy. Well, yeah, you can you can have fun. Okay, it's, you get what watch you the for. replay. Watch the replay. There's no ads in the replay. There you go. Yeah. All right. Anyway, oh, so that's there's a ton of ads playing, so maybe there is a weird little glitch. Uh maybe. But uh anyway, so that's how you play Tora Tora. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah, that's pretty so, cool. So you can you can get away with playing the song live if you use uh, a delay pedal and you have it set far enough along, you can do all the stuff I just did. You can kind of and approximate then and then it comes back in and it does exactly what you hear on the album. Even at the very end of Tora Tora where it goes whoosh. Can you get it to do that? Uh as you, you were saying, that's good. That's actually slam down. that's actually just a, a reverb plate. That's just that's just reverb. That's not uh the guitar okay. at all. That oh. that was something that was added in. I see. Okay. 
you it's know. all just camera trickery yeah but anyway there's the uh there there's the lesson right there again bye guitar Actually, player 98 have a good day see you later man Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. And Torah Torah is in reference to the title is in reference to what? I know there's the war film called Torah 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 about what World War Two one. Yes, the attack. Yes, Pearl Harbor. Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima. I think that's what um, it is because if you listen to the guitar, it sounds like planes flying around. Yeah. And um is it on Fools where he does the Mayday, Mayday, Mayday? No, that no, that's in that, Tor -tor. that's that's well what's after Tor Tor? Lo that's loss of control. Loss of control. control. So so it, it does feel like it's a warplane story between those two songs. Yeah. They totally they, they do fit together. Yeah. And there is a music video to that song what oh yeah <laughs> is this the live live no. Okay. no they're dressed up like doctors oh that's right i have seen this it is not something that got played like on mtv yet or there was no mtv there yet. was no mtv no it was a year or two away yet yeah yeah and it's the only time you ever saw the frankenstein with a humbucker with a cover on it oh that music video. That's the only time you ever saw that. And then he hmm. took it off and went, screw that. Leave it naked. Yeah. Well, that's what that's pretty did. cool. That's what, yeah. And uh, what, what was there a story to the music video? I'm trying to remember what I've seen of this, but they're all in their blue greenish gowns and scrubs and playing yeah. around on gurneys Are, are we talking stuff, loss right? of control? Yeah. yeah. That is my least favorite song yeah, no, lost the on the record. Really? What? I I, I it enjoy it. Hectic to I me. I can't believe. It. Yes, and that's what I love about it. Last uh, little, 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 little. It's that that yeah. kind of frantic energy, but also he's got a great little riff that he's throwing in there, and it's it's uh, precision noodling in a way that. Yeah, I'll show some some clips. Yeah, yeah see, my favorite. They're like doctors and stuff doctors and stuff wait are you you just showed us <laughs> this you just showed us that's from shot. the music that's from the music video that's this from shot? the see they're dressed up like doctors they're like jamming and it's like it's like they're operating and that's what they that's what they have is the the album so i just thought this was like a jumpsuit because he was into jumpsuits for some reason um everyone else yeah. doesn't seem to be in like scrubs or doctor's uniforms we do have a story about this though right Y'all, y'all know that one. The right? shoe. Yeah. What's what? What's what's the? Uh... See, look at so, that. So I could be wrong. Way. I could be. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's different than what he's wearing on this one. I think. Well, no, no, I that's think that was that's, the same that's, shoot that's, as this. No, 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 it's not. That that's not the same shoot as this. The uh, front, the oh wait, yeah, that is. I, I thought you were yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. the music video. No, no, I think they're different. That's I, I was confused. I thought you were saying that that was the cover. The back cover was from the music video. It's it's in the music video, but it's, it's oh, okay. Not, um, so I could be wrong. I could weird. be thinking of Van Halen too. But when did Dave mess up his foot? Was that Van Halen too? Van Halen too. Yeah. I I I get confused with that because he's he's wearing some goofy boot that's tied up super high on the on the leg. And they're in Those what are like looks wrestler like wrestler suits or like ballet shoots or shoes or something. Yeah, and and uh, he's wrestler's shoes. And they're in what always to me looked like water. So I thought he was standing. He, he was covering up his his cast or something like that. But I could be completely wrong. I know there was a thing about his broken foot, but I think you're right. I think that was Van Halen too. That was Van Halen too. I talked about it the other day. Okay. This is like the fifth anniversary this week. <laughs> Jimmy Z it says, turns out Alex went on to become a famous gynecologist in L.A. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. And Dave went on to host the gong show or something like that. <laughs> that happened in the year 1984. And that's what the cover story of Guitar World is this month. And you can win this if you hang out. So Guitar Player 98, come back. <laughs> You're not going to win the magazine. I say we send him an honorary one. 
Well, he might be We're a troll. Having to set too, the so. three commercials. We tend to have a lot of those. That's okay. Say, so, hey, if you want to win country. this, I if do. you want to win this, hang out with us. Right? Right, Liquid Charlie? What's up, dude? Good to see you, man. Shredders yeah. on this channel, man. These dudes all shred. Yeah, they all want to know about the gear. Oh. Shred sick -ass shredders. <laughs> um, I don't know. I love loss of control just because I I did love the um like we said, the frantic nature of the of the guitar riff. And then I love the the kind of talking into um walkie talkie type oh, oh, devices, the, uh... the radio. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Breaker, breaker. I'm going down. I can't correct. You know, all that stuff. I, I just love the imagery they were creating with that. Mayday, mayday. And then da, li, 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 they go right back into the song. Mayday, mayday. <laughs> I mean, is that what they were doing? Were they just talking right into a, a megaphone, into the, into the microphone? They might have been. I think I have... Dave just layered over I... Dave, over Dave. No, over Dave. It, it's Dave and Mike. It's all of them. Oh, Dave and it's Mike. Dave, yeah, it's Dave and Mike. I have the the. Yeah, never let it be said Mike you didn't contribute. That. Oh, really? Is it all distorted <laughs> already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's why I like the song. I do think it, it's not a a radio hit. It's not a friendly sing along, but no. it is. Can't just really even crazy. sing along to it. Right. <laughs> I like to sing along to Tora Tora. Yeah, you know, civilized world. Wow. <laughs> Lost control, lost control, lost control. Lost control, yeah. lost control, lost control. That's the beginning to lost of the, the Torah, Torah right there. Right, yeah. See? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. For some reason, I see John Wayne running over the hill now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and All then right. they go into a more... Oh, now we're getting into it. Whiskey home. Whiskey home. Dude, I think that's another song they had back in the day, too. Take your whiskey home. It's It seems to me like something he would have come up because the, the whole intro is on acoustic. And it seems like something Eddie would have just come up with noodling around. It's kind of a blues riff. It totally is. Um, and it's not overly complicated, but it just sounds really cool when he's adding in the extra little fireworks and things in it. <clears throat> it's but, uh, It's very well written. Yeah, it's a great song. It's a killer party song. And I'm surprised uh, it didn't right get more on radio topic play. with what Dave was presenting as as a front man that he's, you know, has hard time in relationships. You know, the girls are always coming and going. He's getting himself into trouble. It takes him halfway to the label day. before he can yeah. make it through the night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this guy was partying. It was definitely uh, the lifestyle that they were living at the time. Explains it's, everything. Yeah. Owed to some really bad habits. Yeah. And, but when you're it, that when you're that young, it's it's okay. I yeah. Guess. Started slow. It picked it up. There's a insane guitar solo in it. Yes, and I do love how it it. Go home. Well, it's it's. Take yeah, it, it builds yeah. up that, on the acoustic until they just great, switch. Great plane. That's yeah, definitely a song they, they had the back in the stuff. day. There is an earlier demo of that one, too, which is very, very... Uh, it's not totally different from the, the album, but it, it is different enough. Oh, Jimmy Z says there's it's a cool just, version a on YouTube. It's a standout on the album. With John Five, the guitar player John Five, playing with Michael Anthony. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I'll have to look that up. Dane, what's your favorite song on this album? It's not um, Lost of Control. I, uh, it's, <laughs> it's probably Romeo's Delight, but Take Your Whiskey Home is a very, very close second. Um, a Simple Rhyme is really cool. Everybody Wants Some in the Cradle Will Rock. Or in full, man, Side One is all killer, no filler. Yeah. Side Two to me is you've got two good songs. Oh really? Just the last two, or or no? You like take your whiskey take and your whiskey simple home rhyme. And, be magic? and growth oh, is rhyme. cool. Growth is a cool riff. And again, I hear that, and I'm like, okay, bring me more. Give oh me my more. gosh! And then you never get more. I have like, breaking oh, news. Filler. What's up? I have breaking news. I just looked up uh, guitar player ninety eight. 
He is a troll. Every comment he's ever said on my videos are all negative. Poor guy. Everyone. Hey, everyone. If anybody so. knows Guitar Player 98, can somebody go out there and give him a hug? <laughs> I, I think we know where he came from. It's so bad for yeah. Him. It's his troll. Everything he's ever said is he is uh, is negative here. He says, boo. Uh, have you ever met Laz? We should yeah. invite him uh, on. I've met he, Laz. Does, he does say Dane is cool, so oh, that's, that's positive. Oh, I mean, yeah. well, who... You know, how can you deny it? troll? <laughs> he says uh, he wishes. It... Well, I'm not going to read that one. Yeah, he was definitely a troll. <laughs> so he'll, he he will be blocked at the end of this. Uh... Uh, or invite, him, or invite him, him on. Give him a hug. Invite him on. Make a friend out of him. Okay. Well, hey, yeah, if you're still watching, needs... you want to come on? You want to come on? I'll uh, I'll send you a link. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. You, I'll send it to anybody. If you notice that. Yeah. We'll send links to just about <laughs> anybody to be on the show. Um, <laughs> Wonder you got if a man crush on Dane, was. says Jimmy. You got yeah. one thing right, Raymond. Yeah, Raymond, send me, send me the photos, man. Yeah, I want to. How can like how can you was she the in the studio with them singing live? Because it sounds like yes. When when they're singing, um, here's the number, Magic, Raymond. which is the next song. Um, it, it does seem like I, I just there always go. got the feeling like they played that whole song live. I know that they were really into dubbing and and layering and stuff, but. Something about that feels like Dave and Eddie just sitting in a couple chairs in an empty studio singing along. And which tune is that? Uh, the next one, which is um, oh, could, could This Be magic. magic? A.K.A. Lonely Ships Upon the Water. I always wondered why it wasn't called that, but... Hmm. It's also... Might have been. Better Save the Women and Children First. Why wasn't it called that? Well, they gave it to the album title. Hmm. It um, does have great lyric content. I mean, oh, yeah. Dave was on fire at the time. Yeah, he knew what he was doing content. somehow. It, but it, Dave it's was like... on fire right, songwriting and lyrics. It was something. It would take him a lot. Of, it would take him a long time to get there because, again, all those old versions of these songs, you'd hear different lyric content, mm -hmm. and he would get better and better every. And then six months later, they'd play mm -hmm. the song again. He'd get a little better at it, and by the time they were in the studio, he had it nailed. Yeah. And even mm -hmm. with Tattoo on A Different Kind of Truth, you know, Tattoo's an old, old, old song. If you listen to the old version of it, you're kind of oh, like, right. eh, it's throwaway. But then when but he brought it back it, to life. Yeah. He brought it back, and it, it's a I, I think tattoo is a cool song. Yeah. Tat well, yeah. well, technically the music was was a was a song called "Down in Flames," that they would play on the '79 tour. Oh wow! That's right. And then they never recorded it, and then it became tattoo. And it, it sounds like a lot of those were things that they went. Ah, it's not. I can't quite figure it out. Oh well, we'll come like, back to it later. And it didn't like, happen for forty years. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what happened in that one. Um. Lewis is asking, what's the growth hidden track? I must have missed y'all talking about it. No, we haven't gotten there yet. It's the last song on the record. It's hidden. We'll we get can't there. See Hang it. in there. Yeah. It, who knows? It's it's listed there. It's hidden on this track list. So Yeah. <laughs> you don't see it coming. Um, but I love I love Could This Be Magic because somebody pointed out to me or I read somewhere that you can in the beginning of it, you just hear Eddie sliding. He's got a slide on an acoustic guitar, right? And he's just kind of noodling before they get into the one, two, one, two, three, four. And, and if you're listening intently or maybe on headphones, you can hear the rain outside the studio pouring down. And I just, something about that just set a tone in my head where it, it just feels like it's Dave and Eddie just sitting around mm -hmm. going, yeah, let's play that one you wrote, you know, like, let's, uh, da, da, mm -hmm. da. oh, Nicolette's here. Yeah. Come sing, come sing, uh, you know, back up on this. <laughs> it's like, it feels so, spur of the moment and casual there's something casual about it that is mm -hmm. fun and and just like i eh, don't take this too seriously we're just musicians it. Well, screwing around. Yeah. it shows another side of van halen mm -hmm. that's what we were getting you're like these are the guys that did run in with the devil just singing about boats like <laughs> yeah it did it was another side yeah for sure and it's like it's like it's like they're playing a ballad but not it's still it's a like, show a, like, tune. A, like a rock. It's, it's a show like tune. A, rock a tune. show tune. Interesting. And it could be in a movie, an old Western or something. Yeah. Yeah. Dave I mean, wanting to be on Broadway. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. God, I can imagine that being adapted for a really cheesy musical. 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, we'd better save the women and children first. You know. Yeah. It really is that. Yeah. And she yeah. said, right? He even introduces yeah. her in it by yeah. saying, because he wow. sings it. And I said, you know, sail away or whatever it goes. But then she says, and then she sings her line. And then he introduces Eddie. Yeah, that's where we're here. That's where Nicolette sings. Right. Yeah. Goes, yeah. Goes, yeah. Goes back he, and he brings her in. And then before yeah. the solo, he goes, he kind of does a very casual Edward. So it was definitely goes, well thought out. It, it wasn't just thrown together, in my opinion. It's like a play. Tor Tora and the uh, other thing. Mm -hmm. um, um, that was just thrown together, in my opinion. I could be well, Yeah, some of those were fun ideas they just threw together, yeah. Could, could This Be Magic was very well thought, and they sat there for a while. And it might not have taken them very long, but it was really well thought out uh, with Dave's part and with, with Eddie's part, too. Van up, Halen. Jed? Jed, what's up, man? Van Halen, they would rework songs again and again and again until they got it to where it was perfect. Because if you go back, and again, I have a huge box of Van Halen bootlegs. I'll, I'll, they're up there. I'll bring them down here at some point. If you listen to a lot of their older uh, shows or demos or whatever, you hear different versions of a lot of these songs, and they're, you know, they're not quite there. Yeah. Once the stuff got to album, the stuff was was perfect. Locked in. I locked, locked in. in. Yeah. J yeah. JB says, uh, I'm sure Dave sung or hummed it first and then Eddie improvised because you're right. That melody, the da, 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 bum, 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 and, and it's weird because we same never vocally really and... figured out how Dave goes about songwriting because I think what Eddie Dave came up would with tons do of off stuff. the top of my head is he would hear Eddie play a guitar and then he would sit and write lyrics out to the riffs. But yeah, then come up with a harmony to go some, with it. Some of these are so poetic that it seems like Dave, you know, it's got a day off. He's in the bus or wherever, whatever he's doing. And he takes pencil and pen. He comes up with a fun, I funny idea about something. And could this be magic is one of those funny ideas. And it's very well written. Just yeah. like uh, stay frosty. There's yeah. so much good quality lyric content. When you listen to the song back, it doesn't even absorb. It comes no. and goes so quick. <laughs> if he would have slowed give a few down spins. on some lyric content, like their best song is Jump, and the very first line of the song and all the way through, it's so nice and easy and relaxed, and I get up, and nothing gets me down. So easy, so simple. Yeah. That's an instant hit right there. But Dave's right. not up looking for the instant hit. He's writing these really elaborate poems out, and this verse has to coincide with this verse and then you got this great chorus and then the bridge takes you to this other spot yeah and then he brings it all back in the end yeah so you kind of like wonder how did dave write these songs and and so when you listen to tattoo they're playing it live he's coming up with lyrics it's not so good they put it on the back burner 40 years later you know what re re I it. remember that song let me come back to it then he'll sit down and he'll go through it again with a whole it. different idea, whole right. different mm -hmm. right concept or or yeah, I even lyric. Yeah, and he's saying it at the at uh, uh, Gazzari's or someplace one night, right. and the audience was like smoking cigarettes. Yeah, he was like, oh whatever. But <laughs> and so he maybe didn't get a good response to it, right. or and the so girl you kind of get a dating. bad feeling. Yeah, you play and it live, he... and the girl that you're currently dating, she's like, Dave, that's no, that's so. Sad. So, so he, then you write it decades go by and that sure, feeling might fair. fade away and then you give it another <laughs> chance. Right. Yeah. Um, did yeah. you see Sean's question for all of us? Which one do any of you guys? Oh, the pillows. <laughs> Those aren't Those pillows. Aren't pillows. <laughs> I'll never tell. <laughs> Maybe. What's it to you? I might do the stripes, the red, black and white. That'd be nerdy, but kind of cool. Um, there you go. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I I just have all my stuff over here. I keep it all right there. Um, there you go, Sean. You want to see it? There it is. Here's what I got right here. 
Those aren't pillows. <laughs> I got that guitar right there. Yep. And I got the Eddie Kramer poster right there. The no bozo shirt. With a little pack of strings down there and a pack of picks. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. And bars on the windows. Yeah. Hey, because he's got important merch in there. That's right. Is it a cloudy day in Arizona today? It is. Yeah. Oh, cloudy. there it is. Got the UFO. Oh, those are your lights <laughs> reflecting. Never mind. <laughs> and if you want to talk about old classic cars. Uh -oh. Hey, is that a oh, I got my bird out there? That's yours? Yeah. Oh, man. Beauty. He parks right in front of his own shop. Beauty, eh? Yeah, yeah, in the handicap spot. <laughs> oh, no. In the handicap spot. Oh. You earned it. I don't want them bastards parking oh, next to me. Oh, my gosh. Knocking into <laughs> Those my handicapped door, people? Is that door. what you're saying? <laughs> oh, I'm in the God. handicap spot, man. I'm old now. Oh, it is your store. Hey, if you, if you earned it, you earned it. Um, yeah, I, I actually love Take Your Whiskey Home. I think the all these songs, I, I'd say of of all the songs on here, you know, when I would make like a mixtape of Best of Dave's Era or something like that, right? I'd go Cradle Will Rock. I, I felt like I wanted to leave things like Fools and Everybody Wants Some. Those are for the album. Those belong to the album. But if I was to hmm. introduce someone, I'd throw them and the Cradle Will Rock. Could this be magic? Maybe, maybe take your whiskey home and uh, in a simple rhyme. I, I was like, I want them to hear the the range. And those are the three that really stuck out to me the most. But in a simple rhyme is the clo the album Closer. And it is beautiful. And it starts out very melodic and slow and dreamy and pretty. Oh, is this the, the song that uses the Ripley? guitar no. in the intro no 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 but he does use a 12 string on it i believe he does in it? A i think so did he janice no i don't remember but simple rhyme that's another song they had from way back in the day you can hear an early demo of that song as well i mean i feel like they had a treasure trove before they even made the first album uh of stuff they were just oh they did up. yeah oh they definitely did and like I said, they would beach towel, Janice. They nice. would redo the songs again and again and again and again and again before they were on record. And so, what, oh, says, so the oh, is the opening? String. Okay, the opening of Simple Rhyme is is a twelve string acoustic yes. or twelve string electric? Electric. Okay, I think. Dun, dun, Janice, then how should I know? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Janice, you're the intern. Get to work on it. You're supposed to know all this stuff. Um. And then it goes into the, you know, the, I don't know what you call that beat, the from, uh, from Alex. And it's, I'm out of tune already. <laughs> it is a concert. Wait, who sent this? Wait, who sent this? Um, 416. Is that you? Who's in the 416? Do I hear 416? 416 going once, 416 going twice. Do we hear 416? 416? Who sent this? Area code 416. Paging area code 416. They have a poster. Looks yeah. like maybe an original poster on the wall. Uh, my friend's brother had that one um, in his house. Yeah. And then they That's also have a, a, a clipping from from like a, one of those old newspaper magazines. One of them old newspaper magazines? You know, that's from Kurt Rocks. Oh, this is Kurt Rocks. Yeah, Kurt Rocks. Let me. Let me uh... Thanks, man. That's really cool. Yeah. Where did you? Was that a poster you bought in a store, or was I was wondering if some of those? No, that didn't come with the album. It's the it's the one of Dave we were talking about. We'll show that in a bit. Yeah. The. Oh, this is man, cool. Look at coming. that. Take the women and children first. New album. <laughs> new tour. Don't miss them. <laughs> that's awesome. Take the women and children first. Did you? It looks like you cut that out That's of like a funny. magazine or a back page That's of a cool. newspaper. That's cool. That I've never seen that. I've ne I've never seen that either. Oh, That's it was awesome, from the Toronto man. Star or newspaper. Oh, very wow. cool, Kurt. Trying to sell some records up in Canada. Van Halen, Women and Children First promo. I'll bet you that poster was in a record store somewhere, and you just had to grab it. I'd love to there, find a, a new reprint of that. It's very. It's there, a classic. Here, photo maybe, of the classic band, you know. You ever see this one? Th this this is. Uh, this is uh, 
kind of kind of rare. Yeah. Well, they said anything could happen. That's a weird one, isn't it? Yeah. Was yeah, that for balance? No, it's for women and children first. Oh wow! I get it? They're they're out in Hang little. So it's called Women and Children First. We've got the song about boats. We've got the song about airplane battles and a war and stuff. There's a lot of like, there's a there's a theme of like, oh, I don't know. Oh, Would you Janice. say like desperate moments and stuff? Well, these these little ads and stuff like this that ended up in small Marketing. publications. That, yeah, it it's just proof that Warner Brothers at the time was knew that they had something special with Van Halen and they were spending money to, to promote these guys. Yeah. And it was and money well spent, for, right? They didn't always do that. They did it less and less, I think, into the 90s. But um, yeah, money Warner well Brothers spent. did a great job. And it was about getting, getting their pictures out there. And th again, just before MTV would show all the young people, what their favorite bands looked like on, yeah. on, in their living room on, in, well, fully clothed. Thank you. Well, most, mostly clothed. There were some assless chaps here and there as uh, somebody you, pointed out in the, yeah, <laughs> Dave, Dave was no, not shy. Um, but yeah, you know, before MTV, how did you get to see what Van Halen looked like? You had to go to their show or you had to have some sort of publications like, these things that are, you know, posters on the wall and yeah. newspaper clippings. Every once in a while, they would show a music video. Yeah, there where would show, you see that? I'm a little a show too young called to remember that. Don Kirshner's Rock Rock, rock concert. Hour. Concert, yeah. yeah. That oh. concert. It, you know, that'd be a show that would be on where they would show a music video it's here the and there. And Van Halen did produce music videos for that. That's the one where they were lip syncing on stage, right? To the actual album. Oh, the one of uh what what uh what song was that is it, it's from this yeah which one is it is it which uh, one is that Fools? that recently came out i mean I, I talked about it but it but it originally came out 40 years ago or or 44 years ago right what song oh it was fools yeah i think it was Fools. it was fools there's a there's a music video for fools but it wasn't an mtv music video no it was it was just a live... right dane oh dane 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 you're on that's your cue Hey, come on, Dane. Wake up. <laughs> um, but that was the one of the ones I was talking about, right? Where they would lip sync on a live stage, but their yeah. instruments didn't even need to be plugged in. Like, it was all fake. That's the one where he's playing the, the dragon biting the snake uh, guitar. Uh, uh, yeah, and they do the... Were they ever... Video. Was, was Van Halen ever on Soul Train? <laughs> nope. I don't think they would be allowed on Soul Train. Dave might be. They weren't, but uh, it's possible Eddie's guitar was. With who? With uh, uh, Rick James. Rick James' guitar player was playing a Bumblebee guitar. Of Eddie's. Well, it wasn't Eddie's, though. They were they were making the guitars and selling them. Oh. And Eddie didn't like that. And he, they stopped. There are some guitar, some Bumble American guitar Bandstand there. says Jay Beebs. I don't know if they yeah, were. There, American was, there was American Bandstand. There was Midnight, Midnight Special. Special. Yeah, there were there were those music shows, and I just didn't. Dane, would, Dane, would you know was Van Halen ever on the Midnight Special? I don't think so. I don't hey, Mister. There Michael, was that one video that was on what something movie? when they were doing Running with the Devil. That came out somewhere, but no, it was hard to find oh, anything Van Halen anywhere. Yeah, Fortunately, I mean, they, they put their that's basement. not Eddie, <laughs> right? Uh, that's, fortunately, that's somebody they else. Put their, their, they put their faces on the album See? covers, and that right. was all we had for a long time. Were those? Right. Faces that's what we were saying when you were gone. Is that like? If you were to see them in in person or see them live doing their thing, it, it had to be on a TV show like one of these live music shows, unless you caught them coming to your neighborhood. Um, and, and then even MTV, all they wait. really had was like oh, sorry. Pretty Woman from '84. They didn't really have an MTV video in 1982 when MTV hit big. 
Yeah, yeah 84 is when they started making actual videos. Yeah. Yeah, they made, and you see they, some of that live footage from Oakland. Looted. No, they had they had many, many music videos, but you never saw them. Right. They were only on King Biscuit or, or whatever. But not and in so the who, format of like a produced music video like look, we are used to seeing. Soul Train. Alex there's his guitar. guitar. I told you. Okay, but we the band isn't on there. Come on. No, but there's Van Halen's guitar. So technically Van Halen was on Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that that cat guy? Remember when you had that guy on that made the original cat guitar that Eddie had? Yeah, remember that. Maybe that was him. Even when he was in Soul Train, that was the next album. Or maybe that guitar <laughs> was one of those Charvels that got made. Yeah, um, or the one of those that's uh, it was a Charvel. Grover Jacksons that got made mm -hmm. that pissed Eddie off. Maybe that's, that's, that's that guy had that's, one of that's those. That's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, so so anyway, to finish out the the track list though, um, I don't have much to say about in a simple rhyme except it's beautiful. It rocks. It rolls. Mm. It flows. It kind of does everything you want a Van Halen song to do. It's it's definitely one of my top three or four on the album. Yeah, um, and it's, then it goes good. into growth, and growth is just what is it like? No, it's a. Something like that. It was it's just like, a riff. Yeah. That that came in. And again, it's a John John John. Oh, I wonder, as soon as I wonder it how came to play in it. and started doing something, it started to fade right out. So here's the thing. I I you know when I learned that it faded out? Like 10 minutes before we hopped on this show. I was playing the record on my record player. The CD does not fade out, growth. Mm -hmm. The CD always that I grew up listening to ends with mm -hmm. like that hmm. and so, so you heard that I just, just now. was listening to it. i was just listening to it. i went wait it's fading out and i remember hearing the reason they did that because was the idea was it was going to be at the end of the album and at the beginning of the album it would fade in oh is that what it does there it was going to fade in as a song on the next oh, record the next album which would so have been fair, fair warning, warning. It was that's yeah, why fair, fair warning, warning was. that's why the tapping fades in because it was supposed to be like a continuation it was supposed to be a continuation i thought yeah. they were going to make growth go, start the new album so it would be yes. the same song but yeah, it's not it would, the same it, song. no 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 so they changed no. their mind on that but but also growth was a song when they would come back from let's say like uh intermission they would play growth watch the us festival when they come after they leave the stage and come back they're playing growth it tells everyone, okay, it's time to get in your seats again. We're going to rock out. Here we go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just learned that it fades out on the original. That it fades out. Dude. My whole life listening to it on CD and, and I, I believe on any uh, digital Cassette. platform now. Well, but the digital platforms now, I don't think it fades out. No, it doesn't. It plays to the end. Yeah. Ever since it was on CD, it played to the end. I remember back in 1987 when I first got the cd and was shocked that the song didn't fade out see it's the total oh, yeah, opposite yeah. of what you're saying right yeah. right right. we had the opposite <laughs> it's kind of funny um, but dane saw yeah, them play it, that song live in 1980. oh my goodness can't remember that did and they in diapers they might have remember it ron's trying to tell us something but he's muted so yeah ron's oh, muted oh. Ron's actually never heard this album. He has no idea what we're talking about. Oh, well, that's Van Halen 3. Now, I was saying, it, in 87, you were what, four? Who, me? No, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, yeah, he was just a baby. I was five, okay? I'll admit that. <laughs> that's Dude, closer to what I actually was. They have their favorite albums. We're the same I, I had age, Michael man. Jackson's Thriller at that point and had no idea that my favorite musician was actually on it. Think about Ten in years 50 later. years from now, all the 55 year old people in the world that Baby Shark was their best first band that they ever loved. Right? Fucking Baby rocks, Shark, man. man. Who's Baby Shark? Oh, man. <laughs> You're not with the times. No, I'm it's not. Literally, it's literally the most watched video on YouTube ever. I thought this was. <laughs> it's You're We're a close there. second. We're getting You're a close there, second. 
That's where guitar player 98 went to. He went to go watch Baby Shark. <laughs> hey. Pop don't stop. Raymond, did um, you send me photos? I didn't get I didn't get any. Text. Space Text kitten. To my What's number. Space kitten, Jimmy. I don't remember that. That sounds like a 60s porno. Or a Saturday Night Live something or other. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jimmy's mentioning the only people who put Jack Daniels and Ice T are the Clash, baby. Wait. So I think you got that reverse. They put he, Dave was accusing the Clash of putting Ice T in their Jack Daniels bottles. But I guess you're flipping it around. When was that? Was that at the Us Festival? That was us uh, eighty three. Uh, I was there. Uh, I was at, there, man. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Brought that. You, you need to start saying you were there on these shows. Uh, <laughs> Break in well, like anytime clash, somebody's talking to say, I was there. The Clash headlined Friday night. At, and this is the Joe Strummer festival. went on this thing about, dude, you can't buy us. We're not a corporate band. You know, all this. And then <laughs> he found out that. And, and I now think an it started ad. Because. Van Halen made more money than the headliner that of the day, on that show yeah. the, the night before. And so Dave was just... They were accusing Van Halen of being sellouts. Yeah, really, and so yeah. whatever, dude. Ruin your career. Go right ahead. The guy Holly, you missed everything. We just talked yeah. about one of, those, one of those Van Halen albums. Hmm? Hmm? Look at this. The Ned Oh... The What's your favorite song off that record? Yeah, so at that point in their career, being their third album, tons of hits on it, very listenable album. They're headed yeah. in new directions. The Cradle Will Rock was on the radio every 15 minutes. Right, right. right. Um, they were the definitely, radio will rock. Um, they were definitely well, locked in in popularity. We if didn't it was talk a popularity about popularity contest. They were locked. Van Halen was locked in at this. Time. Well, this is yeah. By by the time their third yeah. album hit, anyone who didn't know them was probably getting to really under know a them rock time. somewhere. Well, but I <laughs> I think there were a lot of people like like Johnny's even saying like I didn't really know Van Halen until kind of Diver Down '84. That was kind of when you discovered. Well, Diver Down Van wasn't '84. Was. But... No, no, no. I'm saying Diver Down slash 1984. Like <laughs> no '84. 84 yeah. like jump literally the jump music video was the first time you I hadn't saw really noticed heard van halen before that no never yeah and i didn't notice them in before 95 or 93 i was listening to classical music oh there you go before all and that and i do see the connection there, that long-haired sure. stuff yeah yeah well Hi, that short-haired stuff <laughs> yeah or that bald-headed stuff I mean, depending <laughs> on the bozo the clown hairdo music which yeah. now they're so, trying to say Bozo always had hair on top. So that's the thing. I think there were there were parts of the world where a lot of people were like listening to rock music, but it was still kind of stuck in the seventies and the the Doobie Brothers, and you know, still hanging on to Led Zeppelin, who had just kind of broken it off. And um, well, they had just lost their singer this or their drummer this uh, what the year before, something like that. No, it was eighty. He died. Yeah, it was eighty. Okay, so. Zeppelin was done and you know Van Halen was just coming into their own and their third album and now it's like they were un you couldn't ignore them anymore they were just coming around and then by time by time 1984 and MTV had taken over couldn't miss them couldn't couldn't get away from them yeah Thin Lizzy and Kiss was about it I, I remember hearing people say man before Eddie hit the scene we all thought Ted Nugent was the top of the mountain. There's you couldn't do any better than Ted Nugent. And then this kid comes along right. and blows him away. Right. So yeah, I think I think it took, you know, for some people the first album right off the bat. For some people, it took a few more albums. No, um, I remember the Double Life Gonzo later. album. And when Ted Nugent said, if any of you, you know, came in here to get mellow, you just need to turn around and get the fuck out. And <laughs> that was on a record. Roll. Dude, yeah. we, we that was on an album. What did he say? I know. We're like, what? Play it again. Oh my god! And then he was doing Sweet Plum Tang, and he he actually said, "This is all about that Nashville pussy." 
I'm sorry. I hate to. That's where the band comes bad from. Bad words. Oh. Say, but that was on a guitar player '98. Band. He's Wait just for me. A band, <laughs> for a, he's just making a band name reference. What was that, yeah. Ron? Uh, but also but that was on 1980. An album. Ted Nugent said Randy that Rhodes into the on a album. What, Dan? <laughs> anyway, yeah, Randy Rhodes was right at that time killing it. Um, but yeah, Eddie kind of boop, 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 leveled up above, I'd say, just about everybody at that time and was just proving it again and again, oh. record after record. Um, I wanted to mention real yeah. quick the um, yeah stick of dynamite entering the rock scene. That's a cool. But you know, here's another thing that I remember from back in those days. Believe it or not, when somebody hits a pinnacle in their career, you always have the haters. And even mm -hmm. in 1981, 82, 83, I know all about that, Dan. You had Van, ha <laughs> you had Eddie Van Halen haters, and they were like, yeah. "No, dude, no, he's not any good. This and that." Oh, yeah. They come up with the reasons. Really? Finally, that yes. Just to be different, just to be. And, like, and they were finally, players. They they played. Yeah, all the haters have finally left. It took 20, 25 years maybe 30 years, but the guys that were like, Eddie's not that good, dude, come on, man. You got, you know, and there were, look, there were nights when Eddie was off. Of course, there were albums right. where we talked right. last time I was on the show. We talked about albums where but I'm talking might not have sounded early, as good as before. The but, very early Roth year. Yeah, that early there stuff. Were, was... There were Eddie haters. And I'm like, you, you, man, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. So wait, so well, Dane, so, so they were players though? They, they played guitar? The they guys were guitar were players. Singers? And who were, who were their hero heroes? Uh, probably the the Jimmy Page, Jimmy Page people in the yeah. world, yeah. Page, the guys Hendrick, that were into Queen and Hendrix, yeah, yeah, Hendrix and 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 Jimmy Page and those kind the of, uh, the Deep Purple dude, Richie Blackmore, uh, Blackmore, Richie, yeah. yeah, those kind the guys that were diehard Richie Blackmore fans. They 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 wasn't dealing with um <clears throat> with Eddie at all, but the, the sort of same thing started to happen to me the first time I heard a Metallica album. I'm like, nah, come on now. Mm. Listen to this. It's all just bar chords. Oh, wow. There, that's a good lead. But I was kind of, <laughs> I while, I was like, yeah, there. I don't know if I'm all up for this Metallica stuff. Is it that good? Seek and destroy. Is it really that good? Cause there was all this Metallica bandwagon starting. Yeah. And in 1980, it was the Van Halen bandwagon starting. Well, you know, and they're different. They're almost different genres. Like they're different yeah, subgenres yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, and I was more into the hair metal genre than the the, the thrash metal scene. Well, they and they were calling this hair metal. Well, I don't even think they were calling it hair metal. In they the, wasn't. The 80s. No, it was just rock. It was just it was metal rock. or rock, right? Yeah, when you describe metal, I don't think at the time. I think some people rock. who didn't really see the differentiation between Van Halen, Metallica, and and in the case of Metallica's 84 uh, thing with Jethro Tull winning best metal album, there were people who didn't know what was the difference between those kinds of bands. So right. I think they might throw the label hard rock or metal all in the same thing. And then there were the people who were playing it, who really knew and really felt this music and they knew yeah. the sub genres pretty well. And when you're just really locked into a band and it's your favorite band, and then you hear this new thing come in, mm -hmm. you you always kind of push back a little bit. No, no, I'm not ready for Metallica. That yet. new stuff's never going to still into around. Van Halen and the Scorps, and you know, so. But they all uh, together. Wow, man, Metallica Hello, California. Has done no wrong. <laughs> um, all those bands to opened the, for uh, Van Halen. I know. Eventually, they all bowed down. See? They all yeah. Did, yeah. Except when, except Bon Jovi, he made them come open for him. And then oh, even wow. on on Van Halen's <laughs> first tour, the guys in Black Sabbath felt the same way. I mean, they were nice enough, but then Van Halen, they were like, "Oh man, why we got these Van Halen guys opening up? We got to go on after this." And there was pushback when you see. Well, I also heard Ozzy really, felt really, like really good coming in, and they're the new guys, and you're just like, "Oh." Shit, these guys are good. There's pushback from everybody. Mm -hmm. I thought it was um, Blackmore or somebody, Tony Iommi or somebody who was like, Van Halen came out and opened for us, and we went, "Oh, we have to go." Oh, Jesus, we have to go out after these guys. Yeah, it was like, Tony like felt blown away though. Felt felt right. like they'd been blown off the stage. 
Right. People were mad at him. Yeah. The Eric Clapton's in the world were like, shut that boy up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. He's making us look bad. There um, I just wanted to point out. So the only single off of this record was And the Cradle Will Rock, right? I was noticing on the Let Wikipedia me look. page. Um, there was a 45 single for that one. That is I just true. Don't, maybe there were some more pro, uh, promotional ones, but I think that was um, the only one that got its own commercial release. Hmm. If you scroll up, I don't know if you can. Oh, it, yeah. Oh, wait, where is that? Oh, yeah. It'll it was say, up huh? above. Yeah, there it is. Singles from Women and Children First, April 1980. So did the first single come out after the release of the album? Because it came out March 26th, which is today's date. I guess. And then the month, the following month, the first single came out. The only single, as far as we see there. But there may have been some yeah. unofficial you know, ones for radio stations, whatever. Um, I love this song because it is about the good kid gone bad. And it's junior it's it's a boy and it's definitely that oh man those teenage years they really turn into you know punks and i think in a way when i found this song at that age it was like yeah i want to be like that kid <laughs> i want to be like junior teenage i want, I want them to yeah huh? teenage wasteland had yeah. the same message as the who song right right you know teenage it, wasteland. it, it just made it kind of cool like oh these poor parents they'll never understand but they're not meant to, man. Their yeah. generation is too old and they're That's over with right. it. And they yeah. really got that vibe with this. And it's not only that, the, the cradle that they're talking about that I come from, this teenage angsty yeah. kid, it's going it to rock. It spoke to a generation, a new yeah. generation of kids. And it, it still does, man. It takes you back. You listen to that now and it's still you still feel that energy mm -hmm. of, I just want to be a badass punk kid and go out and break all the rules and stuff. Yeah. Don't Holly come Lewis, you remember when it came out? Have you seen Junior's grades? Other Lewis? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean Junior should have studied a little more, but can I can I say can I say one thing? This album, no. out of all the Van Halen albums, <laughs> out of all the Van Halen albums, <laughs> Guitar Player 98, wait for me, man. <laughs> out of all the Van Halen records, this is like one where, aside from the reverb, if you want to talk production. Yeah. Aside from the reverb, there's nothing on Almost here that nothing. gives it away that dates it as far as no, the music, it, as far as the recording I mean, of it. Yeah, they wasn't using Simmons electronic drums or there wasn't synthesizer. There wasn't anything that made it sound 80s. It's not right. locked into a genre. Well, well technically it would sound 80s. 70s because it's Yeah, 80s. it was recorded right. in the 70s, right? Right. Um, so maybe that's why. Yeah, but it does been good. defined as the It 80s sounds yet. fresh when you put it on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um <laughs> and then the, what about uh, what about the guitar on the cover? You want to talk about the uh guitar? Oh, the, the old chop shop. Yeah. Cutting, cutting it out. Chris King, don't you own one of them? it back together. So that thing was a was it a an explorer? Destroyer. No, I think the destroyer. What was that thing? But he, is this the one he cut? He Was cut that the, the Ibanez um, yes. destroyer. five 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 destroyer, and he cut the yeah. bottom wing off of it? Right, but then, but then it was getting a little too vibrational or something, so he put those restraints on it to pull it together a little tighter, right? Yeah, it's him just goofing off, in my opinion. Well, I that's thought it was maybe he was feeling too much, around. like it loosened it up got so anything much. Anything to I mean, do with tone, Ron? What do you? It's think? all to do with look. That that that's not going to change really? that much. Sound, I no, nothing. I did not know that. I that thought that was very nothing. important. Those things. No, <laughs> no. Just he look cool. Some metal off of it. When he cut those that, bolts are a bridge to tone. When he actually cut <laughs> yeah, after he cut it up, he even said that it destroyed the tone, like Lewis is saying. Oh, really? It so it was best for tone. album covers, not so much for playing. But there was a song that he did. He recorded some of those tunes on that, right? Uh, with that out, with that guitar, right? The first it was album. used. Oh, James oh, before Prime. he cut it, it was used James on the Prime. first record. Yeah, all the songs without tremolo, right? Without dive bombs, are this guitar on the first record, right? The first album. Mm -hmm. By this point, it was just uh, 
you know, like like the chain things have no function, like, says T Fetch. Like seen as yeah. it was just something to use for the the cover. It wasn't a guitar that he played live. Yes, Janice, send me a picture of that beach towel. Janice. <laughs> Get it? Destroyed Destroyer? Ah, oh, never mind, says Lewis. But if you look at the uh, Def Leppard's photograph album, mm -hmm. he's playing mm -hmm. a black. Uh, Phil Collin is playing a black three pickup Ibanez 555 Destroyer. That's what that thing is. That's an Ibanez Destroyer. Are you talking about um, Hysteria? No, I'm talking about pyromania. Oh, pyromania. You're right. Yeah, burn, in the burn, photograph. Burn, burn the building. The photograph uh, video. Oh, in the video. Yeah. A black three pickup Ibanez destroyer. It's a tiny picture here. You oh, that's see not the longer. guitar. Oh, he cut that? No, that's not. No, that's not it. I'm well, way It looks off. like what he cut. We can't hear you, Johnny. Johnny you're on mute, Johnny. That's Sorry. not the, that's the Phil Collin. Cool. That's the I'm Phil Collin destroyer. Yeah, I'm wrong about that too. That's the Phil Collin destroyer. If you guys haven't noticed about half the shit I say, I'm wrong about. Just <laughs> so to clarify. This is he, you can't really see it, but I, maybe that's the one. Yeah. No, I, oh, no, I'm yeah. Wrong Great album. Burn, 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 burn. Yeah, the I'm wrong about it. That's I'm what Phil Collin was playing. That's yeah, a Phil no, Collin I'm... destroyer. It's a later version. It's an '80s version. The one that that Edward is playing is an earlier, earlier one. Right. Okay, so at least I'm right that there are. An, it's an Ibanez guitar. Yeah. Ibanez destroyer. Heck yeah, Holly. I got to see um, Def Leppard. Uh, I don't know, eight, ten years ago with heart opening for him at shoreline. That was a lot of fun. Ooh. That was a couple, you know, checks off the old uh, bucket list there. Here's, here's what Edward would, here's what Edward's guitar would have looked like originally. Oh, okay. Would it look something what? like this? And he wanted to make it more. Oh, so he kind of cut a bottom V shape out of yes, it. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. And that's I why see. I was saying. That's why it's I was saying a, I thought it was just an explore. It's an explore, oh, okay. but I've been as called it a destroyer. It was more like he cut off the bottom part of a flying V or something. But um, no, but there yeah, is no that's bottom part on a flying V. Yeah, right. It's the it's already a V, right? I, I so got I, you. Okay. Right, Janice. I thought I thought that's why the bolts were like holding together the main structure because it was pulling apart or something like that. I don't know. No, I think I, that, I was made just, that up that in was, my mind. That was just for looks. Um, that was just cool. that, was, that, that was wasn't just, for sound. Like it was to make everybody think, hmm, what's he doing now? He's really doing something. And you know what? Yeah. It worked. He made me think it. Um, you know, Eddie's tone yeah. really is on it, it, between this album and maybe up through the next album, it it does feel like one tone before he really starts messing with it a little bit here and there, and then diver down and 84 to me feel like he's tweaking it a little bit and then by 85 he's got a slightly different thing and all the way through the 90s he makes changes but these mm -hmm. first four records i feel like the tone is pretty consistent and beautiful and just that classic van halen tone mm -hmm. i was wondering if you guys had because that's where like i fell in love with eddie was for that tone the playing is amazing but nothing sounds like you just hear eddie and you go oh that's that's van halen in the in the 70s and 80s um if I had like runners up, you guys were mentioning other guitar players that those guys, the guitar players in those days were worshiping. And I was thinking about as far as tone, uh, Queen, Brian May is up there for me. And Mark Knopfler is the other one that their tone is so, I don't know, creamy, magical. It does something to me. It's right up there with Eddie below, but right up there with Eddie. If you guys, I didn't know if you guys had any other tone heroes that you loved. Well, I do enjoy the song um, Black and Blue from uh, 5150. And from, I did enjoy from that. From 0812. 0812, Dan. That's great tone in that one. Everybody on this panel has oh, glasses. Yeah. I know. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that Eddie's tone ever like fell off. I'm just saying right. I, I feel like he had a core tone he started with, and it, it shifted and changed throughout the years. And I'm not saying it ever except for Van Halen three, the tone was kind of missing. It was different, almost very different in most of the songs for me, but 
by by balance it was a very different uh sound to me personally but i didn't know if you guys had other guitar players that you thought you just fell in love with their tone like i did or if i'm all alone in that mm -hmm. you ate one twos you mean at the time or just now anytime and ever like as far as favorite guitar players for their tone as for opposed tone? to just just yeah as opposed to just their fret work their i've got you know, i've got one riffs. right here I've got one. You right got here, one man. right there. Yeah, you you're really that into guy the, right the, there, I man. Mean, Flex, baby. Yeah, if it wasn't yeah. for that guy, I'd be in some Van Halen tribute band right now, <laughs> wearing he's spandex. The polar, he's the other pole that's pulling you <laughs> to be a little more uh, you know? balanced between. This the is two. the okay. that guy changed everything for me. That's very he cool. made me not want to be Eddie Van Halen. That's and that's important because very yeah. few can. Nah, nobody can. I went and saw a police tribute called The Police Experience. And so if oh, they're yeah, up in man. San Jose or wherever you guys happen to be. They're from here. Those guys are good. I'm I'm familiar with a different one. Stun. Yeah, I know them too. Yeah, yeah I know them. I know Stun. <laughs> Brooks. Brooks. Brooks Lundy, shout out if you're ever watching. Shout out, Brooks. What's up, dude? Yeah, big, big police and sting fan, that guy. But yeah. <laughs> Can Go I say ahead. something real quick? Yeah. I was at the Nam show when, one year. This was several years ago. And you know how there's another Van Halen tribute. They're actually from here. There's a bunch. Uh, yeah. Hot for Teacher. Uh-huh. Right? Brooks that played right? in for, that one, too. Yeah. Hot for Teacher. Yeah, he played bass in that. Mm -hmm. And I was hanging out with a friend of mine. We were watching them. And this friend of mine oh. uh, was friends with Eddie. And, and so oh. they took a photo. And they texted Eddie a photo of Brooks. Nice. And and I was like standing there, like I, I was pointing him out. And then years later, I, I told Brooks that, and he couldn't believe it. That's yeah, that would blow his mind. Yeah, no. Brooks is a sweetheart. He's also recently playing, or he's been playing in a Pink Floyd cover band uh, called the House of Floyd, and they're mm -hmm. great. And he does lead guitar and vocals for everything. He's he phenomenal. does his own stuff too. Yeah, busy yeah. guy. Yep. And a sweetheart. All right, of a guy boys. Too. I'm cutting out. I'll see. I gotta go first. too. I'll see I'm you glad we Tuesday. talked about this album. <laughs> oh, you ate one Tuesday. All see right. you later, Dane. Okay. Later, Dane. Bye, Goodbye, Mr. Happy. Mike Anzin. Yeah, I got a boogie, but thanks for having me on again, guys. I'm going to check back and read through all the comments a little later on. Bye, Mike. Thanks, welcome, guys. guys. See you later. See you later, dude. Mr. Mike. And then there was two. <laughs> and then there was us. <laughs> and we're doing a giveaway, too, you guys. Uh -oh. So you, you guys want to win. Somebody, somebody's gonna magazine. win this. Somebody's gonna win this Guitar World magazine. This is brand new. This is uh, the class of '84 special special 40th anniversary <laughs> blowout. You want to win this? All right. What else? What else? Where's Ned? He was here. I don't know. Let's go look over there. Let's see. Um, okay, yeah. So I think, as far as women, children first, I think, uh, yeah, I, th I think we're good. I mean, there was a lot of whiskey's probably my favorite song on that one. Mm hmm. Take your whiskey home. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, that's that's another song that was uh, one that they had demoed. Uh years before you can hear a lot of those those songs and you know I, I tell you guys you know i tell you all the time there's there's a uh, guitar hero speaking about our friend brooks our friend brooks actually did the uh the the vocal was it the vocal he played before they started using the official songs for guitar hero the video game the very first uh, version of that game that came out, the guy that I think he played and did the vocal for the police songs for Guitar Hero game was our friend Brooks, the guy we were just talking about. So, so yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah. So as far as the Guitar Hero stuff, I have all of it. And the stuff from uh, Women Children First that's available on there. And it's just it's incredible to to hear the, uh, the the isolated tracks, you know the guitars, the the keyboards, the the drums, the vocal. They did a lot of cool stuff back then in in the studio, and 
and it's you know it's it's kind of a shame that that you know it's good and bad that that you can listen to a, a song that's been around for 40 years and you just know that version of it yeah when there's so much stuff underneath that unless you hear the isolated tracks like you never knew that they did you know all this extra stuff you know to pad the uh the tracks there you go yeah mike wood yeah guitar hero 2 message in a bottle brooks our friend brooks is the guy performing on that there you go cool right on so what else what else <laughs> have you heard this album yeah <laughs> okay i don't know yeah i, I told know. you i have all the all the dave era one. Oh, okay we'll be talking about fit well i've actually I already talked about 50 and 50 the other day you uh you haven't heard that one yet. this one i just found this this is actually unopened wow. but it's a cutout so it has a, the cutout on the top there but this is unopened so future giveaway on the channel here you guys we have a lot of cool <laughs> yeah man. we have a lot of cool cool stuff but again tonight we're doing the uh the magazine so if you want to win this hang out with us for a little while longer let's see raymond did you, did you ever send those photos in Raymond, did you ever text? Um, Raymond, are, are we on Facebook? Oh, I got to plug this computer in. All right. Okay. Well, it is, it is seven. Okay. All right. Let's do, let's do the giveaway. Let's do that. And then, um, oh, I, dude, I probably, sh I probably should have mentioned this a couple hours ago. Uh, we're doing a, a pedal giveaway uh, this, was it Saturday? Saturday, yep. This Saturday night, we're doing uh, the, uh, the DoD Bone Shaker Distortion Pedal. I did a demonstration of it on Sunday, guitar ASMR show. So if you go back a couple nights, actually, the ending card I'll have a link to this video where you can hear it, but we're giving that pedal away this Saturday night on Saturday Night Live. We've been doing that show lately about uh, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. And by the way, Mike, thank you for the like on X just now. All right. All right, let's do the giveaway. How do we do that? <laughs> what... I already have 5,000 in here. That'll what, work. That'll work. Is that good? That, that, that'll work. Okay. Actually, the only let's other do... thing you could do is, is 10,000. What are we giving away? The magazine? Yeah. What do you guys think in the chat? <laughs> They're going to tell you one to 10. Do you want to guess? <laughs> what, what What should the number... How high should we do the... See, the way we do this is, is a... Um, yeah, just, just shut the door. The way we do this... <laughs> Chris King, thank you so much for all the kisses. Wow, thank you, thank you so much. Look at all those kisses. Oh, a kangaroo just gave us a bunch of kisses. Sean, actually, that's what I was going to do. I was going to put 5150 in there. Although Peggy's saying 6,000. Although, wait a minute, Peggy wins every time. So <laughs> Peggy's going to tell you what the number, the winning number is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, 6,000. Actually, well, let's let's do that. Why not? Okay, roll it. Oh, there we go. All right, the giveaway has started. I thought you were going to say Enter we already a had a winner. <laughs> Peggy will win in a second, but uh, enter a number. Enter a number between zero and six thousand, right now. Right now in the chat. Right here, right now. Right here, right now, and you can win this magazine, brand new. This is brand new. Jed, thank you so much, man. Wow. Thank you, Jed. Let's see. Those lights are supposed to be changing. Lately, it, they, they've been on uh, like a delay. It's been kind of weird. We need to call the police. 
<laughs> hey, call the police is actually one of the best van not van Allen, uh, police tribute bands out there. Andy Summers is actually in that. All right, here I'll, I'll show that. There we go, Jed. Put this towards some uh, JB koozies. Actually, we could do that. Need to put it towards a new laptop. I know my laptop is not good. Jed, thank you so much for your uh, your support for the channel. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, so enter a number between zero and six thousand, and you guys know I'll, I'll give you a hint right away. Four digits. Oh wait, I'll get. I'll give you two hints. Four you're, digits. You give us two hints. Yeah, <laughs> four digits, and each number. It's the same thing. Where it's oh wait a minute wait. wait. Are you kidding? We just got a winner already. <laughs> Before I could even say anything. Lewis. Lewis. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't even give you guys a hint. Let's see. Where's the winning number? Where's the winning number? How is I going to? I was going to say the two numbers are side by side, as in zero and one and three and four. Hey, you're slipping. <laughs> Lewis, congratulations, man. Congratulate. Yeah, way, man. Way. You got it. You got it, man. So, Lewis. Way to be. Text me. Text that number. Text that you won the Guitar World magazine. 84. Peggy's punching the couch right now. <laughs> That's okay. She'll win tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so text me right now that number, what this is, name, where to send, and I will send this directly. 415-952-3263. That's right. That's right. All right, man. Okay. Congratulations, man. All right, you guys. All right, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to, I got to bounce um thank you channel members thank you again for your continued support for for this show this show these shows this channel you guys are awesome next scheduled show i guess is friday talking guitars <coughs> excuse me i can't even talk talking guitars friday uh don't forget saturday we're giving away a pedal so there you go. Probably see you tomorrow on the Laz show. And then who knows? But hey, watch another video, you guys. I did something like five shows the past couple of days. So check them out. Right on. All right, Ron. Be good, everybody. Thank you so much, man. All right, we'll see you guys later. This is... <laughs> Johnny Bean, Johnny Bean TV television. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, Mike. Mike, how are you doing? I'm Johnny Bean. I met you last year. I talked to you on Google Plus. Oh, I remember you. Yeah. All right, let's go. One, two, three. Yeah. He was at a Google Plus hangout. I'm Johnny Bean.